Okay, it's being recorded. Hi all, welcome to the Jenkins Governance Meeting. Um, today is September 16th, and we will be discussing a few topics, including recent news, uh, progress with uh, board and officer election preparations, and also we plan to, uh, to review the roadmap. So these are the topics uh, which have been submitted, and if uh, anything else uh, needs to be discussed, we can uh, do it later. Okay, so let's go with news. Uh, so one of them is uh, the recent uh, release of new LTS baseline. So Mark Daniel, would you like to speak about that? Sure. So Jenkins 2.249.1 has released. Uh, there was some concern expressed initially about compatibility. Uh, we did, Vlad Silverman and I did some deep testing of uh, Windows in various scenarios, upgrading from previous versions to current version. I've been monitoring the Jira bug queue since then, looking for issues and problems. There are still some known, known issues, issues being reported. And we've just, it's, it's been an interesting release. Oh, so Windows agents, yeah, this is basically Windows services. This one, it's fixed. Section this removal and the build monitor top. So basically, nothing really bad though. Yeah, this one like needs some investigation. Was that, was that Windows Agent one? Is that the uh, .NET? Yes, runtime run issue right now. Okay, uh -huh. it's the version inside the config file. Yep. Yeah, so. Okay. Well, I guess I will uh, need to fix it, though so I'm not sure what would be my brand wife. But yeah, regardless of the state, it would be the, it would be great if you can actually fix it and backport fixes uh, into the tool. Okay, and yeah, on a separate note, uh, I know that uh, there is a blog post uh, staged uh, for new features introduced in this LTS. Um, I'm sure, do we plan to land it? Um, no, I'm not aware of a blog post for new features. Uh, maybe I missed something so, because there was a blog post from Vlad, I believe. So Vlad and I posted a description of the testing process we used and describing the three Windows scenarios we use. It's been merged and is already available. Okay. And so, and. So we have that one. There is a revision proposed to the upgrade guide to deal with two surprises. And that revision to the upgrade guides, still that's the second one down on your list there, mm -hmm. Oleg. And it still needs a revision based on feedback from Jesse Glick, but I don't think either of those things are particularly catastrophic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, still it would be nice uh, to mention them uh, sooner than later. Yeah, I, I have to revise the one for before we can merge it. It's, it definitely has to have corrections based on Jesse's yeah. feedback. Yeah, I might uh, have missed something, but yeah, really thought that uh, there is a blog post pull request. Yeah, there, there definitely is, and you'll see. Yeah, I think a blog post for Jenkins so, uh, release. Right. Okay. So this one confused me, I guess. Yeah, no, that's actually. Yeah, so, yeah, that, okay, now I get it, because uh, it was just about testing. Correct, it was purely, a, it's purely, yeah. what, what, what I realized as Vlad and I were testing is we had been through a number of scenarios that may not be documented anywhere. We thought, well, we could put it into formal documentation, but that will take longer than if we just do a blog post for now. So mm -hmm. we intentionally did a shortcut, did the blog post, so that it could be out there in case it would help someone. Okay. Yeah, thanks for the clarification and sorry that I confused you. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, I was relying on uh, my notifications, but I wasn't really looking at uh, what's inside. Right. Okay, and uh, yeah, another related issue is the re recent release of uh, uh, security fixes for plugins. Daniel, could you please summarize it? Yeah. Um, fairly, it was a fairly routine uh, security advisory. Um, 
the most popular affected plugins were the email plugins where Java just has a bad default and does not actually uh, perform host name validation. Um, uh, there were two issues in Lotion plugin, uh, and I would like to mention that the initial version of the security advisory had a uh, bad description for the second one. It was the same problem, but it did not correctly identify what the problem was. So um, we've, we've updated it. Um, we never actually had a cause to update an advisory entry in the last several years. Uh, so this was a new experience and not a fun one that I would like to uh, repeat, but yeah, so um, yeah, exactly this one. And yeah, and otherwise fairly routine, nothing, nothing really notable. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, speaking of that, are we expected as CNA authority to also propagate changes like that uh, to whatever downstream consumers? What do you mean? So yeah, we release advisory with CVE. Then my understanding is that somebody picks it up, including description and creates uh, entries on whatever sites listing uh, vulnerabilities. I've submitted an update to the uh, CVE description. Um, however, the um, in this case, the only thing that's wrong in the CVE entry is uh, the CWE, which is a classification for the kind of vulnerability it is. And the description itself was correct. Um, 2020. Yeah. Um, maybe it hasn't been published yet. Well, I mean, the yeah, yeah, I yeah. would expect them, and that description is correct. As I mentioned, the only thing that's wrong would be the CWE. And I've submitted an update to the database there. So uh, I would expect anyone who consumes the CVE database to okay. synchronize later changes as well. Okay. Great. Thanks for clarification. And yeah, on other note, so Google Summer of Code is officially over. Uh, we have had seven projects uh, this year and all uh, the projects have been completed successfully. So we are still working on uh, summarizing uh, the results on the um, project side, but if you're interested, you can go to the Jenkins uh, YouTube channel and the all demos are linked. Uh, similarly, if you go to any project, uh, there are also links to videos uh, and recordings uh, of what was presented um, in the end of August. So, yeah, thanks uh, again to all contributors, including students, applicants, mentors, or admins, and basically anyone who contributed uh, to the projects. Because yeah, for us, it's the first year when all, all projects succeed. And yeah, I believe that all projects have delivered significant uh, changes which are important to the community. So, uh, I believe this is quite success, success for us. And yeah, obviously we should keep doing it uh, next year. So we have started retrospective. Uh, the first retrospective meetings was actually today. And if anybody has any feedback, please uh, follow up on the mailing list so that uh, you incorporate this feedback for the next year. And yeah, we have also started implementation phase for Google Season of Dogs. So this year we have uh, one mentee working on the Jenkins on Kubernetes documentation. So if you're interested to know more, there is um, a project page on Jenkins.io. And uh, basically the goal is to have uh, documentation sections for Jenkins on Kubernetes right inside our documentation so that we can highlight uh, how to use Jenkins and how to install Jenkins, and how to configure and to, uh, either the address and uh, other deployment options like aberrators, Helm charts, um, and uh, many other things which are available in the Kubernetes ecosystem for Jenkins. Right now, basically nothing is really documented on the Jenkins IO website. So at least creating some solution pages and creating the index of existing documentation references and uh, providing information will be really useful for those uh, who run Jenkins and Kubernetes. 
if anyone is interested, uh, please join us. And yeah, another update that next week we actually have DevOps Vault. So this is one of the reasons why we started shifting uh, governance meetings so that uh, there is no overlap. And I believe that uh, there will be a lot of community presence there, including multiple uh, Jenkins related talks, uh, including uh, community booths and also other areas. So maybe, please, uh, would you like to summarize what's uh, going on there for the Jenkins community? Yeah, so um, uh, we have a track that is dedicated to community talks, uh, community slash open source, and we also have a track dedicated to CDF talks. Um, CDF also has a keynote that is taking place on Thursday after James Governor's keynote. Um, so Marky, uh, Jackson is part of that keynote as well. Um, he's, he's a speaker there. Um, so in total, we have close to more than 50 breakout sessions that is community related, uh, open source related. Um, we also have a CDF booth. So under that booth, we have the different projects. Um, there's so if, if anybody's interested in helping out at the booth, I'm gonna be um, on the platform pretty much all day, Tuesday to uh, Thursday. Um, so I'll be monitoring and um, monitoring speaker sessions um, as well as the booth. So if anybody hasn't signed up and interested in signing up for um, staffing the booth, please let me know and we'll get you set up. Um, uh, let me see what else. Uh, uh, and for this meeting, I'm asking for um, permission to get the, um, the DevOps World logo on the Jenkins.io Jumbotron. And then, um, and then probably shortly we will, I'd like to Get permission to get add CDCon, which is which is um, a virtual conference that is taking place in October, that is hosted by CDF as well. And there are Jenkins and Jenkins X and all a lot of the projects um, sessions are on that event. Um, what else can I give? So for DevOps World, we are close to 20,000 registrants. Um, and let me see, I think, I think that's, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Unless anybody has questions for me. No, thanks uh, for summarizing it. So I guess we need to formally vote on uh, Jumbotron. Well, at least since we had the governance meeting, why not? Plus one for me. Plus one for me. Sure. Thank you. Uh, me too. Daniel, any concern? Uh, no. But, uh -huh. but it's for me. Okay. Yeah, also, uh, if you, you create a Jumbotron, Alisa, it makes sense to actually add the event to the calendar. Mm -hmm. Because right now you can see that there is no calendar section, li section listed. It's because mm -hmm. uh, there is no incoming events in the database. Okay. So yeah, if you create Jumbotron, it would be nice to also create an event, maybe even put it uh, into the calendar. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it will generate any additional traffic. Uh, but yeah, listing events, could be important because we listed here, we listed on the blog pages, etc. So it will improve visibility. Okay. All right. I'll I'll do that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess the same applies uh, to CDF. Sorry, CDCon. Yep. Okay. Anything else about DevOps world? Well, on CDCon, there was actually a blog post posted on Jenkins.io for CDCon. Yes. So that blog has already been posted. It was posted last week. Mm -hmm. 
There it is. Great. Yeah, right. Yeah, so this blog post basically summarizes the incoming sessions. And yeah, there are three sessions about Jenkins, uh, two just about one about JCask by Rudin, another one about Tikton client. Uh, so this what we we're discussing in Cloud Native Seek. Uh, we've been trying to organize a meeting. It will succeed, but yeah, maybe we will do one uh, after CDCon. So, and yeah, there was that talk, but I'm not sure what it is about, and it's not listed. So, okay. So for CDCon, is there anything else we can do? Um, no, I think I think as we we well as once we pass DevOps world, then we pro we probably want to change out the jumbotron to like I said to the uh, CDCon to help promote the CDCon. I think right now we're probably at a hundred registrants for CDCon, um, yeah. and then. Hopefully by that time we should have a little bit more blog, more blogs uh, that we can post as well. Mm -hmm. Note that we have multiple jumbotrons. For example, we have for now published uh, JSOC one will be removed with my pull request, which has been already submitted. Okay. Uh, regarding me, the continuous delivery foundation, I believe that we can safely remove it as well. It has been uh, on for more than one year. Yeah, so you could uh, actually put a uh, boss conference announcements. Oh, perfect. Okay. Uh, you know, have Jenkins the way and participate and contribute. But yeah, I don't see a problem with having uh, City Foundation uh, Jumbotron replaced by the conference announcement. Okay. Awesome. Great. It's even better. Mm -hmm. So. Moving on. So it's October um, 08, 09. Yeah, and yesterday there was a talk meeting uh, for CDF, and there was a discussion about uh, how to increase community engagement. And we were discussing having some uh, lightning talks with demos by project participants, maybe also uh, informal. Uh, or, well, basically just a uh, of feeder uh, focused on projects is uh, subject to discussions. And yeah, uh, there might be additional uh, community content added. Okay, should we move on to elections or did we miss any other news? Just this time. Quite a lot of time there. I'm good. Okay, so for elections, yes, yeah, we discussed uh, in August, uh, if we want to hit uh, the target date, uh, I mean, beginning of December announcement for new officer assignments and uh, elected board members, we need to hold elections in November. And although it looks like we have a lot of time, actually we don't, uh, if we take uh, the existing process. Um, so there is um, a mailing list and there is a Google Doc uh, with uh, suggestions based on the retrospective. So this is what we discussed at the last governance meeting. And I tried to address uh, the comments submitted by board members and other contributors. Uh, and I think that we really need to start finalizing this process so that uh, we can uh, make a decision firstly whether we make a change being compared to the previous year and uh, yeah, if we make a change yeah, we will need to roll out it quickly we can commit some time uh, this week and next week to get it done uh, but we need to agree in principle whether we change the process and I seek feedback, uh, especially from Alex, from Daniel, from Alisa. So Alisa, Mark, and Daniel uh, will be up for the election if you decide to participate. Uh, me and Alex, uh, yeah, basically we remain for another year. 
so that's why we the better visually art uh, basically manage the process so uh, but your feedback from other officers and uh, what members uh, would be still crucial to get it done right and i think i think the new proposal is is sufficient and i think we should go with the change i've read through it i don't see any any major gaps or problems the place that i raised the one question Oleg you had addressed so it was about github organization user id being part of the form that we asked them to submit mm -hmm. yeah, so your... just to summarize what changes key change is that we do not want to rely on uh, jenkins lab database uh, for reaching out uh, contributors and eligible voters instead of that we firstly make uh, requirement uh, that basically election is done by contributors uh, but uh, the criteria for contribution is not just a meter it's basically anyone who can prove uh, a public contribution before september 1st uh, this year so that's basically the whole idea of the change uh, and uh, yeah it also makes a uh, two-stage election official because it wasn't, it's not documented in the current uh, election process, but it's effect, effectively what we had to use uh, last year because we were unable to handle TIFF's uh, uh, voting for 100 southern uh, participants. The system just doesn't support it. Yeah, so. I, I agree that we need to move forward with the change. I'm definite plus one, mainly because I don't think last year's method was, is sustainable. <laughs> so I think this is a, a great solution to that problem. So I'm plus one on this proposal. Alisa, Daniel, did you have a chance to look at it? I have not had a chance to look at it, to mm -hmm. be honest. But I will do that. that. Okay. So. Can we respond via email after the meeting? Yeah, it's fine. So for me, yeah, assuming that, it, well, at least here, it seems that uh, we intend to change the process. So what I will do tomorrow, I will actually document the process and submit it as pull request uh, to the um, election process. So in addition to this doc, uh, there will be actually a formal documentation for the process on this page. So I will do it uh, regardless, but um, it basically gives additional day or so for everyone to submit feedback so that they can uh, incorporate it. And after that, I believe that we will just uh, review it. And if uh, governance both members agree, we will merge it. That's actually a question. Do we need another sign off at the governance meeting? We, we had talked last time about it, but I think we should take this meeting's sign off as as presumptive and declare that, yeah, we've got we've got two members of the governance board present. We ask for a sign off from by email from other members of the governance board separately. Uh -huh. I agree. Okay. Right, that captures it. Okay. okay, does anyone disagree with this statement? So basically governance board signs of the process, no new meeting, and assuming that there is nobody voting against in the developer list, we go ahead. Sounds good to me. Everything yes. looks good. Okay, then. Then the ball is on my side to write this doc. Okay. Do you have Kate still a permanent member? Sorry. Is KK still a permanent member? 
according to the current process, yes. I plan to reach out to KK uh, because, yeah, well, how it's documented, four members are elected. If Polsky uh, decides to resign, all five members will be elected. So, so when, you will be un only one person. Unless Kiki decides to resign. Yeah, I understand that it's not ideal, uh, but uh, well, I don't think that it's end of the world either. Uh, for me, the main objective is to actually ensure that Kiki explicitly defines uh, his plans before we do the announcement. And yeah, we will start uh, need to start sending out nominations, etc. in early October. So let, basically, we have two weeks to prepare and uh, to start all formalities. Thanks. Uh -huh. Yeah. So Tyler is up for re-election, but yeah, uh, Kiki by default is not, and uh, another video for this. Other board members uh, declared their intent to step down. Okay. okay. So, moving on, are there any other questions, concerns about the elections? Do you have a set of fields that you would want in the um, form, and I can start looking at creating the Google form? Uh, well, I kind of documented it here. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually, I plan to create a Google form. If you want uh, uh, to take this section item, I'm happy to leave it to you. Yeah, I'll take a look at it. Uh, oh, second up. Okay, works for me. Anything else? Okay, then move on. on. So roadmap review. Um, again, um, yeah, we still need to conduct a roadmap review meeting and informally. And yeah, again, it was planned uh, to today, but um, so do you want to do formal go through in 30 minutes? Or do you just want to have a, a quick status update? What's your preference? I, I would love to at least have a status update, but I have to acknowledge that there are a number of things here that I have not yet updated that I should, right? Git plugin performance improvements mm -hmm. is, is from current to should be released and things like that that I failed to do. Well, uh, it's basically a community-driven thing, and that's why we have uh, roadmap reviews, so that we can grab statuses. OK. Uh, so yeah, speaking of that, yes, we will need to update uh, uh, JSOC uh, roadmap items. So for example, checks API is delivered, GitHub plugin performance improvements. Is it delivered from your point of view, Mark? It is delivered. Yeah, we've delivered the major release and two minor releases are three with important fixes and he's continuing to work. So he's working on additional enhancements, but I think it's delivered. Mm -hmm. So regarding the rest, yeah, dark theme, uh, I need to confirm uh, this theme, but it looks like it's rather in G now. Um, say, for example, uh, yeah, so what else do we have? Um, plugin management here, UX revamp, I think we can keep it in a uh, preview because yeah, there is still a lot of work to, done, uh, to be done after discussions. Team management, yes, yeah, dark team probably move to G. And here, uh, yeah. The documentation migration is still pending, so we haven't really completed the migration of any uh, type of documentation completely. And it looks like a good opportunity for October 1st to maybe try getting it over the line. Uh, 
Right, and Jonathan Marais of the DocSig has been doing excellent work in getting ready for that and prepping for Hacktoberfest. Oh, cool. Uh, thank you. Uh, configuration UI tables to diffs, which I think we need to discuss the status. Uh, I, there was supposed to be a UX SIG meeting today, but I guess uh, we, it will happen only in two weeks. But yeah, for me, it would be interesting to know whether we plan to merge because uh, the main concern was about compatibility issues, uh, not about uh, the feature readiness. So at some point we, we need to make a call whether we merge it. So here, accessibility, it's kind of near term. And again, we could put some items for October 1st, but it doesn't look like we are ready to start doing a full scale project right now. Modernized mirror, mirror infrastructure. Isn't it completed? Originally, it was uh, me moving to mirror bits. And... So the mirror bits move is complete. What's not completed is the disabling and shut off of the old infrastructure and the transition for Windows. So it's, I think it's current. I don't think it is, it is near term. It's really current and it's actively being used in production in many use cases, but we've still got a, couple, a few use cases left to do. They were discussed in the infrastructure meeting on Tuesday. Tim noted two or three that we still need to do. Uh -huh. So maybe preview. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that it's at least it's at least current. Preview is also very valid because it's it's currently actively being used. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. not uh, making any notes because yeah, we rely on the recording. So. Right, but Daniel, yeah, we'll thank you very much for what you've done for Update Center. You're wonderful. Yeah, plus one. Okay, so here the recording terminology. Alex, uh, do we have uh, major changes there? Um, no, we don't have any major changes. We're we're, um, we're we're still working on it. We had the blog post PR that was put in uh, that Marky did. Um, that's just one small portion of it. Um, so it's still kind of in that same realm. Oh, yeah, there the was a um, uh, pull request today to update glossary. So now here you can find a controller. There is still master, but this disclaimer says it's a deprecated term. But I think probably we need uh, to move deprecated terms elsewhere. Uh, but yeah, this glossary is updated. Uh, for me, what's important for this section item? So uh, terminology updates inherently include a lot of uh, minor tasks. And we have Hacktoberfest uh, starting in two weeks. So what could be done? Uh, we could um, highlight terminology now for agents and masters, white list, select list for Hacktoberfest. But in such case, we really need uh, to have um, a set of tasks somewhere as GitHub issues or as Jenkins Jira. And right now, there is still a link to the developer mailing list. I believe that Valid. somebody so, took an action item to create uh, these tasks, but I'm not sure who was it. Uh, I think the docs office hours is a good place to do that with Jonathan Moraes and his work. Uh, Marky Jackson had a technique that he was going to describe to us once we get him back and available again. Uh, but I think that's a good one for a GitHub issues in Jenkins.io uh, mm -hmm. so that they're easily found by Hacktoberfest. Yeah, for October first, uh, good first issues will be automatically highlighted on a random basis to October first contributors, uh, as well they are highlighted through GitHub. I would say it could, well, if Jenkins IO website was in the Jenkins CI GitHub organization, it would have been even better in terms of highlighting, uh, but it's definitely not a reason uh, to move uh, the website. So just creating good first issues uh, could help us. And we also need to document it as a featured project. And uh, this definitely marks section item to reward the Hacktoberfest page, right? That what yes. we discussed as advocacy and outreach seek. 
Yes, I've still got that. Yeah, maybe we should move it to current uh, with the assumption that we create uh, this framework so that uh, we can uh, onboard more contributors to the effort. It's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, user interface reward, user guides, solution pages. Yeah, I guess it's like that. It's mostly well, a declaration of intent. We still do changes here and there, but no centralized project. So here, management and administration, mm, remoting still preview, it still doesn't support Java 11. So I guess it cannot be moved to GE. Uh, there is a pull request from JC for moving it to GE, but I think that we are kind of well, deadlocked here. Uh, manage permissions, uh, yeah, basically uh, the scope still needs to be uh, uh, completed before we move it on. Because yeah, managed permission uh, still uh, didn't fully deliver on the defined scope. In the oh, gym. okay. Because I, I thought that, that managed permission and system read were included in 2.249.1, if not before, but you say uh, yeah, that there's something uh, that before, that. but as preview. I see. Okay. Yeah, so what uh, has been done uh, um, for uh, system read permission is that in uh, 2.254 we basically graduated it, so it's G. It means that we need uh, to update uh, so to my windows. We need to update this uh, field, it's now released, but not manage permissions. So Jcast plugin compatibility, yeah, it's a kind of rolling effort, still a lot of work to be done. Uh, Windows services, uh, it's not even a preview because it still needs to be integrated into Jenkins before we move it on the Jenkins roadmap. Um, script security, yeah, it's blocked, uh, the pull request is there, but it hasn't been integrated. Built-in plugin management is code. We had an agreement and JCask meeting that we want uh, to def redefine this item a bit. Uh, basically to have a roadmap embedded in a plugin installation manager tool. We haven't done it yet. Uh, but so yeah, it's rather near term, though recently there was a 2.0 release uh, with uh, some changes. Um, but yeah, my best feeling that we will also need a 3.0 release soon because there are still some um, strange behaviors in the component. So I guess there will be more or less full roadmap there. Okay, plug those configuration sources, no progress, administration guide, yeah, basically the same, but the remote and monitoring the same. Okay. Is it final if we press it like that, item by item? Okay, Jenkins Kubernetes separator. Uh, so maybe Alex, do we have some news after the discussion with Svirta Schlapp and Red Hat? Um, so I had sent you a request for the email address for um, uh -huh. some folks, uh, but you were already on vacation, so I don't think you saw that message. So I, I need the, I need the address for the not the Red Hat side, but the other um, uh -huh. folks. I, I don't have any contact information for them. Okay. So, yeah, let's uh, follow up in the thread because, yeah, I really didn't see the request. So, if okay. you poke me again in this email or whatever it is, it would be appreciated. Okay, we'll do. Uh -huh. Okay, for Jenkins file runner 1.0, again, uh, there are some changes, uh, but uh, yeah, definitely it's not uh, ready for release candidate, so it's still in progress. I believe I will move it, uh, well, it's in preview here and because Jinx Fun Runner is available, uh, but yeah, it remains as is. For external fingerprint storage, finger uh, preview is um, at the right state. Uh, so all APIs have been integrated, but some APIs have missed uh, the LTS release, so they were integrated only in 52, if I recall correctly, or 50, 53. So right now it's in preview, though if everything goes fine, we might be able to graduate it um, for the next LTS baseline. 
also I submitted a pull request which actually updates uh, the pluggable storage storage state because I think that we actually need to put uh, all pluggable storage on the roadmap explicitly. So what we have here, I will just show the pull request because um, it makes it more explicit. Oh, it has been merged. Okay, so then I uh, works as well. Um, uh, so it's development instance, but basically it's small as what was. No, mm, sorry, it's actually all two version because I switched to another branch. Yeah, it's here. So this is what was published on the website. We have a few stories, and maybe it makes sense to put them on the roadmap explicitly. So, for example, build logs. Uh, it would be nice to have task logs. Configurations maybe not because uh, after the Jenkins configurations code, arguably uh, nobody really needs uh, plugin storage for configurations. It's arguable, but definitely doesn't seem to be a priority. The code coverage uh, results, yes, it makes sense. Build runs, jobs, uh, it would be nice to have uh, it listed. For test results, um, yeah, Tim Jacob uh, currently is working on uh, updates. So the JUnit plugin has been already released with uh, changes to support that. Uh, there is also reference implementation. It still needs to be hosted on Jenkins uh, organization, but I think that it was being mentioned on the roadmap. And yeah, for the rest, yeah, the other items, I also think it makes sense to put them on the roadmap. It will add uh, five additional items, but I think uh, in this case it's reasonable because pluggable storage is a kind of non stop source of questions. And right now it's just external pluggable data storage, but we could expand it to multiple items. Okay, what's next? Jenkins on Kubernetes online meetups. I guess right now it's rather on hold because uh, I guess nobody has time to host them. Um, and I'm not sure whether it's going to change in the coming months. So the previous meetups were quite a success, but uh, we really need uh, meetup hosts uh, to keep them running. And yeah, I might be able to commit maybe to run one meetup per month, but definitely not more. So. Let's see. Tecton pipelines build step. Yeah, it should be in preview soon. Uh, we discussed it um, uh, before because it will be presented at CDCon by VPHAP. Uh, but yeah, this item basically almost ready. There are some architectural issues to be addressed, but yeah, generally it's ready to try. Yeah. Jenkins fast capability is basically Jenkins file runner, but rather with tooling perspective and with packaging perspective. So I believe it uh, remains as is. And maybe when I have a better roadmap for next phases, I will rework it. To comment Jenkins on Kubernetes, now it should be in progress. So I will move it. Take on pipeline execution engine, maybe it should be moved to short term because yeah, there is a lot of discussions already happening around that. Uh, but yeah, let's see. Pluggable storage we discussed. Okay. Anything we miss for cloud platforms? Because yeah, there is a lot of topics, but it looks like all of them are related to items we have here or in Cloud Native Seek. Okay, packaging and platform support. Maybe uh, Mark, if you could drive uh, this part as a platform sure. stick figure. You bet. So Docker images for S390, uh, PowerPC64, OpenJ9. I believe we've still got that's still in progress in that in in the sense that there's an effort there. Uh, um, Mike, go ahead. No. So. Migrate to adopt OpenJDK has happened in Alpine already. And now we've got to make the change to migrate to or update to use the correct branding, Eclipse, 
adoptium. Forgive my mispronunciation if I'm butchering the pronunciation. Uh, rename everything. And yeah, actually, it's, yeah, so for that, yeah, you have plugins, Jenkins IO, and there, there is adopt open uh, GDK, of course, and the plugin name and artifact ID. Right. And but so it that like it has to be changed to adoptium as well. Right. And so, so that that's but that that we've seen progress. The Alpine image has been updated to use Adopt Open JDK. The Adopt Open JDK, the Adoptium project was willing to provide the Alpine image base for us, and it, it's worked out reasonably well. Or the Alpine Build uh, Custom Jenkins Distribution Build Service was a Google Summer of Code project. I assume we would call it in preview, Oleg. I don't think it's in production. Uh, it's or well, it more current. It yeah, just let's define current. what uh, you mean as production because it's here. Okay. Uh, so yeah, what we discussed there was a last ditch attempt to get it hosted. Uh, well, it was a subject uh, for retrospective in, in public discussion. But to be honest, I'm not really ready to even move it to the preview stage because right now it doesn't work. Okay, good. Then, then it just stays where it is. That's even yeah. that's even so better. We plan to keep working with Sledin uh, to see how we can proceed. But uh, as a service, it's definitely not ready. As a self-hosted solution, it might be moved uh, to preview, but uh, we'll need to think how we uh, organize roadmap. Because okay. it can be two parts. The custom Jenkins distribution built uh, Tool, probably not, but yeah, I need to think how to call it and uh, customize Jenkins IO. Um, then, yeah, customize Jenkins IO definitely not in preview, right? So, so Docker images for ARM 64, uh, not, not any active work as far as I know. There, uh, multi platform Docker images, the ARM 64 ones should come pretty easily too. We have AWS agents we can build those on. So we, we should be able to do those um, as part of like, even in the same time frame as the S390X and PowerPC, I think. Oh, good. Thanks. So we can move that one over. Okay, so that one could be into the current column. Yeah. All right. Uh, Multi-platform Docker images, that was, that's dependent on the other work, if I recall correctly, Alex? Uh, uh, Yes, so yeah. Mm -hmm. then. So, yeah, yeah, there are some prototypes in terms of code. Uh, there are pull requests merged in uh, Jenkins uh, Docker, but it's not used by default. Got it. Okay. Then in the far rightmost column, Java 14 plus support should now be updated 15 to Java 15 support. support. They just released Java 15, but it is not mm -hmm. an LTS. Uh, we get. We need to look again to see when the actual JDK project plans to do an LTS. The last I had heard, it was targeted for 17, but there was noise in the mailing list that it might be 16. So uh, we need to check that further. Yeah, and for us, it will be a good question because supporting the three JDK LTS baseline becomes problematic. At the same time, I do not see how we could drop support for Java 8 into 720. Right. And I, I, I think that's completely infeasible. Too many people critically depend on Java 8. Yeah. So we, I, it, this one is an open topic. I would rather uh, let it sit and even wait until after Java goes with their LTS before we start work on it. So it's. I think Java 8 is much more valued in the computer community right now than Java 11. And Java 11 has been supported for a year or more, right? It's been actually almost two years now, hasn't it, Oleg? It was 2.160 yeah, something. 1.64, I think. Yeah, it's one year and a half or so uh, for official support in the Jenkins project. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, almost two years. So 25th uh, of September, uh, it will be two years of Java 11 in GE, also my birthday. But uh, yeah, um, still, uh, yeah, adoption in the Jinx project is really low. So something like 1% or so. We can consider switching uh, defaults for Docker images 
by default. I would be willing to consider that. Um, but uh, yeah, before that, I don't think we will get significant adoption. Right. Good point. And, and also, um, people need to realize that just because Jenkins is running under uh, like a Java 11, that doesn't mean they can't do Java 8 builds. It's so it's documented, uh, but yeah, yeah. But there is documentation. And vice versa, you don't need to run on Java 14 to do Java 14 builds. So unless you just made it, but yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So <laughs> anyway, it's no, it's no issue. Okay, cloud native uh, Java support, yeah, definitely future. Uh, well, uh, I have some good progress in Jenkins File Runner, but yeah, extrapolating experience of Jenkins File Runner on Jenkins uh, in this particular area doesn't seem to be feasible. Okay, right. developer tools, yeah, we are running out of time, so yeah, just for release automation needs to be moved to done. Uh, plugin bomb preview as before, static analysis. What, what? One yep. question on core release automation. I don't think the um, branch has been merged into master yet. It has not. That is correct. So that would be, I think, the final. Yeah, it's needed to be merged. Right. Mark, do you have any forecast for that? I don't. I was I was hesitant to merge it until we get Olivier back. Okay. That's probably a good idea. I was just just being lazy. I admit it. I was just being lazy. I didn't really want to merge it until he's back to help if there's a problem. Well, I second to that we shouldn't touch it because yeah, you can see that there are merge conflicts, etc. Uh, well, uh, but yeah, that's a valid point that we still need to finish that. So let's keep it as is. Like right, now, more. Yeah. Now on that theme, Alex is working an issue now for us on the Windows installer related to core, core release automation or to core releases. So thank you all, Alex, in advance for your work on dealing with Windows and 8-bit fields. Yes, it's not, it's not one thing, it's another with Windows installers. Exactly. Okay, okay. Well, like back to you. Yeah, plugin bomb, static analysis, change log automation, dependency management, basically nothing changed. So we, it's mostly a documentation issue, uh, but yeah, these bits, I would rather keep it as is on the roadmap. Uh, for the next uh, infrastructure for experimental Docker images and continuous delivery of Jenkins plugins, with the incoming changes uh, for Docker Hub and these uh, cost issues reported for the factory, yeah, it looks like these items are rather subject for the consideration. So not touching them, but yeah, let's see. Contributing to Jenkins, yeah, again, well, contributor guidance have been refreshed largely, JSOC is completed, and Google season uh, of docs is in progress, like it's listed. Community breach, no progress. October 1st basically starts in two weeks, so happy to move it to progress. Yeah, that, that should be part of my pull request for the Hacktober best work. Well, I will submit uh, all the roadmap updates in about, oh. so you can uh, leave it right. to me. Great, thanks. Okay, Jinx is the way, online meetup platform as is, LinkedIn, it's, well, you can uh, move it to release, and well, I do not think that there is anything else to be done there, unless we want to get premium account. Uh, okay, migrate CI Jinx agents to AWS, is it completed? So yeah, I guess it's done. Uh, we have, we're still using Azure, but we do have agents on AWS, yes. So I, yeah. I don't know if there's a plan to completely move off of Azure or not, but we do have agents on AWS. Okay, so I think we're gonna keep it as is. Yeah. Well, definitely stability is still uh, not satisfactory, though I'm not sure, Mark, what's your impression about uh, AWS agents stability? It, it is still not satisfactory. You said it very well. I wish it were better, but yes, we've got ugly band-aids in place that help it. And yes, users have developed the bad behavior that they'll close the pull request and reopen it. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Yeah, moving on. So funding on community bridge, uh, no changes. It's available in the preview, but we haven't promoted it, uh, which means we didn't really get any money so far. Although the process is documented, uh, it's not working. So I believe it's on my list to push it eventually over the line. But uh, yeah, right now, if you ask about uh, status of Jenkins money, uh, to be honest, we are not in very good shape. And it might become a problem in 2021 if we do nothing. No, well, we got a bunch of JSOC money. Uh, yeah, so. uh, current transaction initiative is done. Governance bot and officer elections in progress. Technical steering committee not really started. And I guess that's it. So for this roadmap, are we actually missing anything? I'm not aware of anything that's missing. Agreed. Yeah, then I'll probably just look for the stories we have on the table. Wait, uh, yeah, maybe we should start taking conferences and major engagements like CDCon, DevOps World, uh, etc. to the roadmap. Force them to Salon 20, by the way, virtual this year. Oh, is it? Okay, so they've announced it'll be, it'll be virtual. Yes. Do you know how they're going to handle the booth or the exhibit situation? I don't know. No idea. I guess it's still an exercise for everyone. Okay. They might do virtual booths. Oh, well, it's quite straightforward. Uh, they might not. Uh, definitely for us it uh, changes uh, things, but yeah, let's see. Okay. Um, what else? Community advocacy, marketing. Yeah, I'm not sure what to throw it there. And contributing to Jenkins also. Yeah, we need uh, um, to regroup, maybe add, uh, some plans for bots, but ultimately we need contributors to these areas. And right now, if everyone uh, looks to be at the limit of their capacity. So, yeah, let's see. Maybe onboarding more contributors isn't the worst idea. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else to discuss today? Not for me. Oh, 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 yes. I'm meeting with the Linux Foundation team today to talk about Jira migration. Uh, oh. So that's in progress, and the no need to even put it in the agenda. Like it's. But I'm, I've got to get going on that to be sure that we make it in time. And next meeting, we we should we will include on the agenda uh, JFrog Artifactory and what we know about that. There's really nothing to say this time, but next time we've got to discuss what what have we what have Daniel and I learned about Artifactory and what do we need to do in order to meet their uh, their requirements. They, they, they stated that they want to continue hosting, but they, we need to bring the costs under control. Yep. And uh, it would be much appreciated. So yeah, JFrog helps us a lot. They do. And yeah, we should find a way. Okay. So, and for Docker, uh, do we have any specific plans so far? No, actively discussed in the info meetings, uh, but no, uh, no, no concrete plans. Uh, yeah, GitHub has recently announced that uh, they will support anonymous uh, pools uh, from uh, GitHub packages. So it was just two days ago, so I can find a link. What, well, it definitely resolves uh, our major concern about the uh, GitHub uh, packages or whatever it's called now, but yeah, whether it's enough, I'm not sure. Okay, next meeting. So this meeting is out of order. Uh, we, we expect to meet next week, but uh, there will be DevOps world. Uh, so 
and uh, if you postpone by two weeks, uh, then uh, it will be CDCon. So my okay. proposal would be to actually meet on 30th. And could you scroll down? I think in the August 26 notes, we had a had done this same calendar analysis just to be sure that. Yep, and then October something. Oh, we had not set a date in October, okay. Yeah, so we can uh, meet on September 30th, or Great. we can meet on, uh, well, I guess, uh, October 7th, and October 7th is CDCon. Um, so one of the things that we wanted to do was be sure that we stayed aligned to LTS release dates. Mm -hmm. uh, let me look at the count. So the calendar says we will release an LTS on, is it six? No, uh, mm -hmm. seven October. So it was intentional that we met on LTS release dates, if I remember right from Daniel's guidance. Well, we had a meeting uh, last week for LCS. A uh, meeting didn't happen, and I believe that it didn't change anything. Well, valid. Yeah, good point. Yeah, so, so we can uh, meet on uh, October 17th for sure, but yeah, what's exactly the purpose? Yeah, September 30th is fine for me. That's great, and it avoids a collision with CDCon, so I like mm -hmm. that. Daniel, is it fine with you? Or no opinion. Need... Hmm? Sorry. No opinion. Great. So let's go with September 30th. Okay. Fine with me. CD call and the Mm-hmm. So I guess that's it for today. And yeah, sorry for going over time. I, yeah, I need to think how to do the roadmap review better, but at the same time, we just need to do it uh, once per quarter according to the job. Right. So it shouldn't be a problem for the next meetings, at least. And yeah, thanks to everyone for your time. Thanks, Oleg. Yeah, thanks, thank Oleg, for hosting. Yeah, so see you in two weeks. Sounds good, thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.